Hello, 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 hello. Good um afternoon, good evening, good morning. Um hello everybody wherever you are in the world. Hello, hello, hello. How are you all doing? I am um surprise <laughs> hi um impromptu live stream today so we didn't have anybody uh scheduled for our saturday creative hour for this week um so we was just gonna take a week off but then i was like you know what i feel like doing something i feel like um creating something so why not um go live and you know create together just for a little bit something very very simple hello irma hello liliana hello mary hi jill hello carolyn hello so uh today we're going to um be creating on uh, this little paper mache round box um i can see i've prime to the inside we are going to have to prime the outside as well together and my plan is to use this beautiful paper which is called um christmas floral black by forest law from our christmas paper collection that just came out last week um and to kind of you know make this um live stream a little bit more fun and you know because we like to do giveaways here on decoupage queen and by the way this is also live on uh, my youtube channel dainty, dainty gifts and also my page dainty gifts so you know if those of you watching over there um this is um also is streaming on decoupage queen facebook page and if you are not um on that page yet you should go and like it it's facebook.com slash decoupage queen um and so anyways to make this live stream a little bit more fun and we like to do giveaways i am going to be giving away 10 of these beautiful christmas papers um in a3 size mind you may i add so a3 size 10 papers for one lucky giveaway winner um today so it's just a selection. I picked out um, a few papers from um, all of our guest designers for this collection and a few of the uh, Decoupage Queen originals. And all you need to do to enter the giveaway is um, share this live stream on Facebook and tag a friend in the comments. And I um, am going to be using that Wheel of Fortune that um, all of our live streamers have been using for the past like two months now um the the wheel of names whatever it is so i'm going to be writing down all of your names on it and then at the end of the live stream we're going to spin it and we're going to find out you know who's the um who's the lucky winner um so all you need to do is share the live stream um to your page to your group i don't know with your friends wherever and then tag a friend somebody who you think might um also enjoy this um live stream right now what we're going to be creating tag them in the comments and i'm going to be writing down all of your names on the wheel of fortune now you might need to bear with me because it is just me doing it uh, so i'm gonna try and do my best to not miss any names from anybody um and yeah i am going to flip my camera over here onto um, the creative space and we are going to get started. Now I do um, see that I'm going to put these papers away first though so that they don't get caught up in everything. I am going to just take a second to write down all the names of people that have already um, tag the friend and all of that and say hello. Hello, Anne. Hello, Roberta. Good morning. Hello, Cheryl. Hi, Anya. Hi, Priyanka. Hello, Becca. First time watching. Well, I hope that you will enjoy our little um, creative, I don't know, hour <laughs> or so. And yeah, I hope that um, it's going to be very, very fun. 
Okay, one moment. I do need to somehow try and, you know what? I did not think this through. Um, usually there's two people doing this. So <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'm gonna write down the name. So we have Mary Casey, who has already um, shared and liked. So if I miss off your name, I'm just gonna, call out the names of everybody that shared. So if you, if I miss your name, please do let me know. Um, uh, hello, Josie. Hi, Leanne. Hello, Julie. Uh, Sue, have found you this week on YouTube. I have two pieces on the go. Fabulous. Oh, Sue, hello. Welcome. Okay, so we have Becca. Shadburn. Then we have Danny Tong. Hello, good morning. Hi, Katie. Hi, Anne. Hello, Terry. Um, hello, Lorraine. Okay, Anya. We have Leanne. Hello, Sue. First time watching. I hope that you're going to enjoy this live stream. Just bear with me. I'm going to write down the names. So we have Danny Tong. Hello, Penny. Oh, you know, Terry, if you, <laughs> if you can help, um, if you can, that would be amazing if you're not busy. I didn't want to ask you um, earlier, you know, because I thought, you know, she's having a day off. I'll let, I'll let her have a day off. <laughs> but if you're around and you can keep track of names, that would be um, very, very awesome. So we can get started. <laughs> thank you, Terry. I, um, um, thank you. Thank you. Let me know if, if you need access to the, to the stream yard. You're such a, um, such an amazing person. Honestly, thank you, Terry. Terry is our saving grace. Um, hello. Okay. Jill has tagged a few people. Thank you. Hello, Peggy from Texas. Um, that paper you have on your desk would go great on the MDF piece I ordered. Which MDF piece did you order? Ooh. Uh, okay. Hello, hello, hello. Right. So I have this... Um, Paper mache round box, which I got from Mad Arches, Leanne. Shout out to Leanne. Um, so it's a um, like a nesting box. It came with three, um, you know, sitting inside of each other. This is the medium sized one, and so I primed the inside with some of this um, acrylic primer from Pentart, and now we're going to prime the outside together as well. And I'm going to apply as thin of a coat as I can on the outside part here um, because I don't want to add too much thickness to the outside of the box because when you put the lid on, um, when the lid goes on, the lid overlaps. And so, you know, if you apply too much uh too many layers of paint or too much paper and all of that kind of thickness um part of it can add up quickly and then it will be very very difficult to close the lid so we don't want that of course we want our little box to be usable so we're going to try and apply as thin of a coat as we possibly can and then uh, you know because i already applied um, a coat of paint on the inside here as well. We'll see once this is dry, we will see if we need to, if we can afford to put the paper when we decoupage the sides, if we can afford to put the paper just on the whole of it, or if we need to, um, you know, line it up to where the lid is going to be and then stop there and just paint um, the rest of it, leave it as is kind of thing. So, you know, that's one of those things that if you are working on something that overlaps like that and it is main, meant to be opened and closed and all of that, then uh, you do need to think about it ahead of time. 
so we'll just apply a coat of primer and then really that should be enough for us to have a nice white base for our rice paper to go over because this rice paper is quite thick um so you know it doesn't and because of all of these like super colorful um details right we have a lot of dark colors over here it's really only the white parts um that would be showing through the color underneath but we still need to prime our box because it is uh made out of paper mache so which makes it you know a little bit more of a flimsier material than wood would be for example but it does also mean that it's you know a, a more easily accessible material because a lot of like hats come in these kind of boxes a lot of presents come in these kind of boxes just you know a, a popular material for packaging so um you may not necessarily need to buy one of these um specifically to be decorated you might just already have one you know because um i know and you know and we all know that we all like to save all of our pretty packaging all of our pretty boxes from everything that we get <laughs> because one day we will definitely decorate them. So maybe if you have something um, like this, this will inspire you to go ahead and um, redo it. And I don't know, what would you use this kind of box for? What would you put inside of this box? Maybe a special Christmas ornament or a present for somebody, right? Reuse it um, and put a present inside of it or something. Okay, hello, hello. Um, okay, we have a lot of people sharing. Thank you, thank you for all of your um, shares. Hello. Love and light to you all. Well, thank you and love and light to you too, Penny. And handmade chocolates mmm yes handmade chocolates and uh, maybe cookies biscuits I don't know around this time of the year I think we all um, well not me but I think most people <laughs> tend to get you know the the baking um, hats on and start um, cooking and uh, making stuff for other people and everything and uh, um, I say not me just because I am honestly not the biggest fan of uh, cooking in general mm, not my thing so you know and baking making biscuits making chocolates all of that falls into the same category truffle chocolate I like that I like that as you are doing Christmas, I would use it to present someone with a beautiful bauble. I really like that idea. See, that is more of my alley as well, Carolyn. I think, um, I think like putting a handmade Christmas bauble inside is a very, very good idea. Um, you know, you could pack it, um, put some like raffia inside or some, I don't know, shredded papers, tissue paper, anything like that. And then you can put... A lovely Christmassy bauble inside of it and it's gonna be just a, a beautiful thing to give to somebody um hello Maria oh thanks Liliana so okay let's get on to our decoupage part so let's see our box does close the lid goes on um however it is starting to get quite tight i'm not sure i'm not convinced that we have much more room for it to um for me to be able to apply paper all the way to the edge and then still be able to slide the lid on so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to grab a pencil if i can find one first uh, thank you, Terry. You're a star. You're a star. Oh, Emma's latest hobby is making bonbons. That is 
very nice. If you make some extras, um, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I'll, I'll send you my address. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Anne says soaps would be nice. I agree. I think soaps would be very, very nice as well. Yeah, so anything like that, really, anything that is kind of on a smaller side um, and would fit in just one little uh, present in there. Okay, so as you can see, I marked off the edge um, here so that I know where my paper needs to stop. And the plan is really to just use um, this rice paper on the top and then the edge here, and then we'll figure out, we will still need to paint this part with something, or maybe we can put some wax on it, I don't know yet, but we'll figure that out. Um, and then um, I want to paint this part on the edge as well, we're not gonna put decoupage paper on it. I keep going out of the frame, I'm sitting kind of weirdly. <laughs> Sorry, if, if I go out of the frame, shout at me, please. Um, and then I was thinking, I picked out this ribbon that I have, which is um, a, um, what do you call it? It's like a texture thing. Oh my God, why is the word not? The word has escaped um, right now. Um... Velvet. Velvet? Is this velvet? Um, it probably says it on here. Velvet ribbon. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, brain. Okay, so let's pop some paper on the top first. So I'm going to take the lid off. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'll pop the lid on. And um, so this is an A3 size paper, which I mean, isn't it beautiful? Um, you could put this on so many things. But um, because the lid is kind of, my, my box that I'm working on is a, a smaller size. So I think this little flower, right, we could do a big one, but then it's going to end up cutting it all off and we're not gonna see as many details. But I think this little flower here on the corner is just perfect. Oh, and by the way, yes, yeah, so um, Katie, Katie was just here. Katie, where are you? Katie's here in the comments, or at least she was. If she, if you still are, please uh, please announce yourself again and pop a, put a pay, um, um, link to your page in the comments as well. Because Katie is the person that designed this beautiful paper, actually. Um, so Katie from Forest Law. Here you can see the name. She is the amazing person behind this beautiful design. And yeah, so I think I'm going to try and get get it to the edges so that we can see as much of this beautiful paper as we can, like so. And then we still can see some of the um, some of the details and everything here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my finger to lightly like crease in the paper. The beauty of decoupage green rice paper is the fact that because it is such like strong good quality paper you can do that. Um, you can kind of put in quite a bit of force into it and nothing will happen to it. It's not going to rip, it's not going to, um, nothing's going to happen to it. Right, so now I'm going to grab a little brush and using a little bit of water on my little brush, I'm going to go around the edge that I just creased in and I'm going to wet the edge so that then we can tear the paper instead of having to cut it and that will just make it a little bit easier for us to deal with you know any kind of um, overhangs or anything like that so I've wet the edge and then I'm gonna I'm just pulling the paper really like from the edges like so kind of pushing it down and we have a little rough 
uh, cut off the motif. So now you could either, if your design allows, you can leave these like edges or you can tidy them up if you need to. So in places where there's just a little bit more paper hanging off or maybe like here because I was so close to the actual printed edge. Um, I have a little bit of that like straight line. So I just clean it off. Probably won't be very visible later on. But we will clean it up nevertheless. And we're just gonna tidy it up. And the next step, I'm gonna take some decoupage glue. As you can see, I don't have much left in here, but it does need using up. This is matte decoupage um, varnish and glue from Pentart. And I will take a clean brush, pick up some glue, peel back my rice paper, apply a nice coat of glue onto the lid, and then I kind of like roll the paper onto that part where I just applied the glue. And then you can just check, pick it up, check make sure that there's no like air bubbles or anything trapped on the inside of course this is rice paper that we're working with so um it doesn't really crease you don't have to worry about it coming into contact with a water-based product you know the glue and creasing um a lot i mean it can still happen creases can still happen especially if you are working with like a really really large paper um, which, by the way, like this particular one comes in five sizes, A4 being the smallest one, A3, which is this one, A2, uh, which is double the size of A3 that I'm using, A1, which is again double the size of A2, and A0, which um, is big enough to hide a... Um, several small children behind it. I don't know why you would find this information helpful, but here we go. <laughs> I haven't tried it, just so you know. I haven't tried it. Uh, oh, Jackie, you have never used these papers. Well, you need to make sure you enter yourself into the giveaway, which you can do by sharing the live stream and tagging a friend. And then maybe if you're the lucky winner, you can get yourself 10 of these big A3 size papers, um, which, you know, I have here ready to post. So um, all I need is the name and address of the giveaway winner later on. Obviously, once we know, I will ask you to email me. And, um, and yeah, and they can be posted to you uh pretty much right away well not today because post office is going to be closed but on monday as soon as it's open they can go in the post so i applied another coat of glue over the top and now we just need to let it dry and while that's drying we can sort out our edge here and i think all I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of figure out if I have enough, if this paper is big enough. Yes, of course it is. Um, for us to just roll it over like this and over the edge. Yes, and it is big enough to overlap. So I think the easiest way to measure this off is going to be for me to try and line my, I I do have a cutting mat here, so maybe I can utilize that. I'm not very good at measurements, as you can tell. So we have uh, just over one and a half, one square and a half. I don't do measurements. I do, <laughs> I do these kind of weird measurements. So I'm gonna line it up on my mat. Kind of like so. Try and make sure that it is straight. And 
I don't know, should I put a mark in with a pencil? I probably should. Okay, I will bring out my ruler. I don't like rulers. Obviously, we also make sure that you always, whenever, if you're doing something like this, take into consideration that you also have a, um, like a, a print bleed edge, right? So like there's nothing printed on here. And I will try and keep my ruler straight and just put in a very light mark of roughly where I need to tear the paper. If it's too short, you know, if it's going to turn out to be a bit too short, and that's fine, we will deal with that later. Um, rice paper is the best, I agree. <laughs> Hello, uh, hi everybody, tag two friends already, oh that is awesome Jackie, thank you, um, okay, hello, hi Linda, hello everybody, share the tag, hi Nancy, <gasps> you sneaky, I won't tell them, nobody's gonna tell them, we're all here, um, this is a safe space, if you have to, you know, be sneaky and watch from work, your secret is safe with us here. We are all in the same boat. I'm pretty sure we're all guilty of doing that. <laughs> At least once. At least once. Don't tell anybody though. Okay. So, again, I wet the edge where I... put my mark in and then I'm just trying to carefully tear it as close to that mark that I just put in. Ah, Terry, you're a savior. I don't know how I would have done this. Um, this live stream definitely would have been two hours long <laughs> if I had to put everybody's names down. You know what? I really did not think that there would be so many people um you know in the in the live stream so thank you everybody for um for joining in uh, you know um, it's very last minute so thank you thank you thank you for joining us and uh, for sharing and entering the giveaway and you are all just the best mm, that's okay linda you haven't missed too much um i i did spend quite a considerable amount of time just waffling so it's okay right so this is actually just perfect so all i need to do now is tear off the white edges here and then figure out how like long it actually needs to be so again i'm doing the exact same thing on this edge what is this white stuff here some kind of little chips of paint or something coming into my into my water okay so again I'm gonna tear off this edge you could leave it and just sand it off later but again I just find it that this is the easier the easier way when you're working with something like this because um i mean who likes sanding okay i know that there are some people that um do enjoy sanding um i i have to agree to disagree with those of you that do enjoy it personally cannot relate i'm sorry <laughs> it's just not no, mm -mm. um but yeah if if i can if i can avoid sanding I will. Um, I just really don't like the messiness of it. And you know what? And I, I know that it's a, it's probably a weird thing, and I don't know if many people can relate. But I absolutely hate the feel of sandpaper on my fingers. Um, it always makes the, it always like sands down the 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 skin on my fingers, even if I just touch it very lightly. Um, it always ends up sanding down my fingers, and then they're all scratchy and then they get caught on everything and it's just well not a great experience so yeah 
um, the fact that we can just tear the edges is very, very handy. Very handy. And there we go. So we have a nice little trim here of our rice paper. And I'm going to, again, I just wrapped it around first without gluing it down. And I'm going to, again, wet this edge here. And tear the paper because then again, when we have to glue it down, it's going to be easier to you know, blend them all together. So also what I'm gonna try and do, because there is a seam here on the box itself, you know, if you can see it very well, but there is a seam, so I'm gonna try and um, align the seam of the paper with the seam of the box. And let's get that, wait, which way should I do it? Which way is gonna be easier for me? This way, I think. So I'm going to try and align the paper and again I'm going to peel it back here from the edge, from one edge and then I roll it over just like this. and. Now we can peel it back to the other side and we can go over another little bit. So just make sure that you work in sections if you're doing this kind of thing to help you, you know, avoid getting caught up in paper and it all kind of stick into each other and uh, and all of that kind of stuff. I know that maybe there are some people that again like can't relate to that kind of thing but if you are on the same kind of level of messiness and clumsiness as I am then you probably know exactly what I'm talking about so just try and stick to smaller sections at a time especially if you're paper that you're working with is quite big in size. Um, in general, it would be really a, um, a good rule to keep in mind that the bigger the paper that you're working with, the more um, sections or the, like the more you're going to have to work in sections rather than, um, you know, just gluing it down at once. Because if it is just like a tiny little motif, yes, you can absolutely go ahead and glue it down in one go. Um, but the bigger it becomes, the, the more important it is for you to kind of keep control of that paper. And then you can adjust it as you need to as you go along. I'm going to push it down. I have to say, um, Katie, if you're still here, I absolutely adore both of these papers. Like they are hands down um, my favorites from from the whole Christmas collection. I have to say, like no offense to anybody else, but um, the, the you know all of the papers are beautiful, but the these two, the the black and the white Christmas um, florals, are just for me personally they just they they hit the spot they they do it for me okay so we went around that whole thing now i'm gonna go over all of the bottom parts here that we glued down that we just decoupaged and apply another coat of glue over the top to seal our paper in. And if there's any wispy edges on the bottom, we can glue them down, make sure that nothing's sticking out anywhere. Just like this. 
apply a coat of glue and we're gonna have to do some drying and figure out what color we should use on the edges what should we go for just white I definitely we're gonna um, do some like snowy edges with first just paper paper first with just um, paint and then with probably um, a snow pen uh, paint that snow pen mm, okay hello hello uh, Irma says decoupage paper is awesome almost would rather frame them up instead of using them well i have to say there is nothing wrong with framing your um rice papers or your, any of your decoupage papers um molds whatever it is any of your craft um craft supplies there's nothing wrong with just taking them putting them in the frames and using them as actual like home decor um especially if like if you are framing something you can play around with um repainting your frames so you know go hunting for frames at uh thrift stores charity shops facebook marketplace and so on get yourself a whole bunch of um old frames and you can put some molds on them if they're not very ornate or you can just repaint them you can apply waxes to them you can do all sorts of stuff and then you can you know play around with the framing um put your paper inside you can either decoupage it or just you know put a little bit of white paper behind it just so that you know the colors show through properly put some white paper behind it behind the glass and then um Put it back in the frame there's nothing wrong with it and by the way yeah if you don't decoupage it and if you just put it in then you can also exchange them out you know you can you can replace them so here you go if you need some seasonal home decor get yourself a, a few frames put your papers inside and then you can replace them you can keep the frames and just keep replacing the paper inside <laughs> Tag four friends. Oh, Jackie, awesome. Thank you. Uh, hello from Germany. Hi, hi, there. Hello, hello. How are you? And thank you so much. Shed and tag. I don't do straight lines even with a ruler. Well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Thank you. <laughs> I know. I'm very late at responding to um to comments because there's a lot of them and i i got um caught up in um talking about the papers what do you do with string after you break the rice paper i'm not sure what you mean iris do you mean like with um these bits these bits off of the edges I just usually bin them, but you can um, save them if you need to for like texture. Um, any of these kind of edges, you can use them for um, applying texture. What medium do you use to apply it? So today I used um, Pentart decoupage varnish and glue in matte finish. This stuff here. But also, I do have to say that, um, like any other Mod Podge, PVA glue, um, anything like that will do absolutely fine as well. I mean, there is a, um, there are um, advantages to using um, a sp special decoupage glues, right? Like this one, for example, is the fact that it has also varnish inside of it so it makes it a lot more um, durable and it saves you from having to apply um, varnish over the top for example um, but if you know if you are on a little bit of a pinch with the money or you don't have access to all of these special products um, for them then you know just get whatever white um, glue that you can and um, Get, get on with it. There's there's nothing wrong with it. Um, hello, Rafiq. So 
so good to see you. Uh, and to do, yes. The look on the edges is really nice. Yes. Hello, little redhead girl. Steph. Hello, Steph. <laughs> good, Bella. Hello, Fiona. Hello, hello, hello. Art basic 3D matte gel medium. I'm not, I've never tried that, but yeah. That's good. Yeah. How about um, everybody put, put your favorite decoupage glues in the comments and like leave a few words as to like why do you um why do you love that particular glue or what like what is your favorite thing about that glue you like sending but it hurts your hands i know leanne it's it's horrible isn't it <laughs> it is a paper mache box yes yes nesting boxes Oh, okay, she's got the sound off. <laughs> Love cardinals and angels. Is there papers with those? Well, yes, there are. There are. Um, there are cardinal papers. There are actually, I've put um, a few into the selection of um, the giveaway uh, pack. So the giveaway pack, let me just quickly, I know this live stream is probably going to go over an hour for a little bit. You know, I'm going to try and be as quick as I can. But here we have one Valentine's paper. We have this beautiful paper going into the giveaway box. We have these beautiful ladies. We have this beautiful paper from Alte Ulala, Victoria from Alte Ulala, um, painted these. Um, it's watercolor painted. So we have some cardinals. We have some angels. We also have this big one um, of the cardinals in here. We have these beautiful baubles. We have more beautiful baubles. These uh, baubles, um, all three of the baubles are from Ellen J. Goods. So these are her paintings as well, turned into papers. And then we have this beautiful paper from Forest Law, which uh, I don't have a white background here, but I don't know if you can see. Um, so it has like blue snowflakes um, and it's also by Forest Law, can you see the one that's in the comments here and we have the um, Christmas floral white going into the giveaway pack so yeah if you um, if you um, fancy some of that you can also see the whole selection of Christmas papers that we have um, over on Decoupage Queen uh, Facebook page, there is an album that I created with all of the Christmas um, rice papers. So, okay, the, the rice paper is now dry, the glue is dry. So first thing that I want to do, I think is, um, the first thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to add um, some little white specks. I'm just going to use, this is white chalk paint that I put into an old jam jar um, because white paint is one of those paints that I think as decoupage artists we tend to um, go through like a lot, a lot, especially if you um, especially if you um, use rice papers or napkins or tissue papers. So any of these kind of papers that um, are, you know, pretty see-through, they all require a white base to be put underneath them so that the colors show up properly. So, you know, as a um, decoupage artist, we go through a lot of white paint. So I tend to pay, um, buy my white paint in um in bulk i tend to buy uh furniture um paint so chalk paint or mineral paint whatever is available um at the time and i just put it into these like little containers which usually tend to be um empty jam jars and i keep it on hand at all times and so I'm using um, a uh, stenciling brush so this is a round natural bristle brush and I pick up a little bit of paint 
onto my brush and then as you can see I'm using my lid as like a little palette mini improvised palette I dab off the excess off of the brush onto here and that allows me to staple on like a white a nice white uh, frosted looking edge and I will lift it up in a second so you can have a closer look because at least on my screen here it doesn't show up as well it shows up like very very bright on the screen so I'll lift it up in a second and I'll show you what I mean um hello hello sorry i am so behind on all of the comments so if you have a question please if i if i've missed it um please post it in the in the comments again feel free to just copy it over and uh and just pop it in because i i'm not going to catch up on, on all of the comments um oh yes anya definitely needs to order a, order some big papers <laughs> Dear 67 year old happy oh definitely jackie well we do also um by the way um if if um you know um the luck is not on that side today um we do live streams on decoupage queen uh facebook page every saturday usually and um at 3 p.m eastern standard time uh, which i'm not sure where about in the world you are but it's usually eight o'clock um in uk or nine o'clock in the evening uh for central europe and we do little paper giveaways every time we do a saturday um live stream so make sure that you follow the page if you don't already and then you will you know you will see it pop up every saturday and um usually it's all on the same kind of thing where you just share the live stream and you tag a friend and you're entered into the giveaway um so you know there's a there's a chance to win the papers pretty much every week From the Christmas book sold out. Oh, whereabouts are you, Carol? Put my white paint in the container too. Hi, I can't see the name um, of, of, of the person that just commented that um, it just says Facebook user. So, but hello <laughs> and thank you. Stencil brush. Yes, absolutely. Stencil brushes are very, very handy for getting this kind of look okay so I've gone around the edge and I'm gonna try and zoom in so there you go hopefully you can see it so it gives you like a nice frosted edge Atlanta Georgia okay um I am pretty sure we have a few retailers um nearby um, if you go to decoupagequeen.com slash retailers, um, there is a list of all retailers that um, we have um, in the world, which we have quite a few. So head to decoupagequeen.com slash retailers and you will be able to um, find all of them. I'm, I'm sure that somebody, somebody will definitely have some. Um, a lot of our retailers or most of our retailers have online stores so um, you should definitely be able to get your hands on some of them uh, this week box is turning out so nice thank you Anne thank you Terry thanks for popping the link in Yes, if you just pop in your zip code or your postcode, um, you will be able to find a retailer that's like the closest to you. And obviously we do ask 
uh, people to support our retailers as much as you can, even though we do sell um, rice papers from Decoupage Queen website itself. We um, always try and give the priorities to our amazing retailers. So check out the retailers first, please. Uh... Oh, okay. Hi, hi, Sotranka. Sorry, yeah, your your name is not popping up on the thing for some reason. So again, I'm just going around the edge at the bottom, giving it a nice frosty edge. And mind you, this is a very very simple uh, project, which would definitely be much easier or much quicker to do if you wasn't um just <laughs> like me you know and checking the comments every two seconds or whatever so uh, the fact that we've been streaming for almost an hour now and this is all we've done like don't don't let that um intimidate you because this is actually a much quicker process if you just concentrate sit down um do what you need to do uh you know you can even have stuff in the background it's just that if you you know playing in the background just do, do, try not to get distracted like i am <laughs> on other stuff and then we will just do um so this is the this is going to be the like the more difficult part of um like stippling or blending because we don't have i don't have an edge to keep my brush in check so i'm gonna try and be as careful as i possibly can to just give it a nice across the edge and then i think all we'll have to do is paint that um, outside edge and apply another coat of paint on the outside edge. I think I'm just going to leave it white. Put our ribbon on. Maybe add a few specks of white paint, a little bit of snow paste here and there. Add a bow. Should we add a bow? I think a bow is a must, right, on a box like this, somewhere on the side. Oh, and another trick that I will show you later on, once we get to that stage, remind me to show you the trick for, you know, making the lid slide on and off easier, so that I don't forget because after we've applied all of this, all of the paint and the paper and everything onto, onto the parts where the lid overlaps with the body of the actual box, um, it's going to be, it's gonna be much stiffer, right? Regardless of um, how thinly you apply your paint, regardless of all of that, it's still gonna make it all a whole lot stiffer. Uh, oh, somebody's from Portugal. Hello. Uh, doing well, just going to see my daughter in a few minutes to see how she is after her. Oh, um, okay. Just found my dad's in the UK, have these papers in stock, trying to watch you, but looking at all the lovely papers as well. I really can't blame you. <laughs> I really can't blame you. Yeah, so we have my dad's in the UK um, who sells um, and, and she has all of the um, Christmas papers in stock. But we also have um, 
a few other retailers in UK that sell decoupage green papers. So uh, we have um, Yorkshire Sitting Pretty um, in Yorkshire. We have Hobbylicious, who have an online store and they have a good selection of um, papers, decoupage green papers as well. Um, we have Joanne Rowe from Crafts of Hearts, who also sells uh, papers uh, but those are in person, I believe, but you might be able to contact her um, about them, um, you know, getting some posted possibly. I don't know, but I, I know that she definitely sells them in person. Um, and then, wait, who else am I missing? We have, just like Home Interiors, I believe, um, have also recently started retailing decoupage queen, uh, queen papers here in UK. So we have quite a few um, retailers here. Okay, here we go. We have the edges that I've done, and now I'm just going to no, don't close this. So I'm going to just apply another coat of white paint on the actual, the very edge here, and I'm I wet my brush in water before picking up the paint because this is chalk paint, so it is a it is a thicker paint by itself and I don't want to add too much thickness to this part of my box. So I wet my brush so that it lays down a little bit more evenly. I'm just trying to apply another coat to give it just a little bit more coverage, make it a little bit brighter. And So I've done this side, now I'm going to go over with some white on this edge and after the live stream is finished I'm going to I think sort out the inside of the box. I want to, I don't know, maybe I'll paint the inside black. And do some white specks on the inside you know just make it snowy or something not sure what do you think what color should I paint the inside of the box eh, just trying to keep these edges fairly clean the fireworks are starting it's bonfire night here to, um, tonight in UK well mind you um, the, the fireworks have been going off for a few days now <laughs> but um yeah i expect tonight is going to be quite loud here they're starting they're starting now it's gone it's gone dark outside so i've gone around these edges as well and we're gonna close this for now i'll dry the box dry all of the paint that we just applied uh, a bow is a must good yes i i i knew that you guys would support me <laughs> to a bow good 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 we have in here yes um helen and leslie are just like home interiors are so helpful in quick delivery Absolutely, I have to say as well, from my personal experience, I've bought from them several times um, and yeah, they are amazing. They are very, very helpful, just the sweetest and yeah, definitely check them out. Um, black, paint black and then add specks of white and red. Oh, ooh, white and red, I like that. Black. We still have time to get your names down for the giveaway. Yes, exactly. We still have just a little bit of time left for adding your names. Okay, so box. Okay, the sides need to be dried one more time. Let's give it just a little bit extra time. This is what we're looking at. This is what the lid and the and the sides look like together. 
I think it already looks really, really nice. Obviously, I still need to paint the bottom as well, but that can wait. And then we just need to add some finishing touches. So we will go over the hour just a tiny little bit. Okay, so the ribbon. I think the ribbon would go very nice. Should we add it at the very top? Or should we add it like right in between in the middle? Yeah, I think we'll go for the middle. Okay, glue. I think I'm just going to have to go for my hot glue if it comes on. You know, I got this um, cordless hot glue gun which is amazing, I can't fault it, but um, oh my goodness, the, do I, I have to charge it so often. I don't know, like I charged it and then I didn't use it um, for a while and we'll see if it actually works. Okay, it's, it's working, okay. I can see the glue coming out, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Jackie likes the Victorian looking papers. Me too, me too. And let me find, do we have an edge? Okay. I will chop this edge, make it straight-ish. As you know, not too good at, um, at keeping things straight but we will do our best okay and then I'll just again we're gonna try and work in sections and then port our glue on and our ribbon kind of goes in the middle hopefully it will line up because again and I know I said it a million times already today but I am not very good at keeping things in line <laughs> it's um Probably one of my biggest flaws. Okay, so now I need to chop it around here. Okay. Oh, okay, you have the same one and it always, well, at least it's not just, it's not a me problem then, huh? I mean, I'm sorry that you're also um, experiencing the same issues, but at least it's not just, at least we're not alone and it's not us. It's, it's, it's the glue gun, it's not us. Okay. We have our ribbon on. Yeah, it kind of lines up-ish. Now we can just make a bow. And Hopefully this will be enough for a bow. Hmm, okay. We have sticky tape here on the end. My last bits of this beautiful ribbon. I'm gonna have to go and get some more because I do like it a whole lot. So I'm just gonna tie a bow. I think the bow can go on the side like this. And I'm going to try and twist this so that the velvety side stays on this side here. I will chop the ends a little bit longer and what I will 
also do is use this leftover bit and I will wrap it around the middle of my bow again because it's not double sided um, you know when you tie the bow and you twist it and do all of that it um, it shows off the non velvety side and then we can I need another glue stick in here. Add more glue. Wrap this thing around. We're going to try not to burn our hands. That would be good. And we'll let this sit for a second because I did apply a bit too much glue here on this bit. Hello! Hi Terry! Hello, hello, hello! Hi! We're just finishing up. Hi Elaine! That's okay, you're not late, it's fine. You can watch it back in replay. You get to see the end result first and then um, go and watch it back. <laughs> you get to, you know, it's like, it's like knowing what the film ends with and i don't know see controversial um how do you all people feel about you know getting to know the ending first and then um go into like read a book or um watch the film if you already know how it's going to end because for me personally i if anything prefer that because I have um, I'm a very anxious person so I really don't like to um, to sit around and wonder how is this going to end is, is everything going to be okay are they gonna be okay um, so I'm just adding a little ends here making what do you call these shesh chef chevron chevron end i don't know is that a thing it is a thing now now we can glue down our bow here so i'm adding like a generous blob of hot glue i am popping on my bow we have last few minutes, um, last few minutes to enter the giveaway in which I'm giving away 10 A3 size papers. A3 size papers from um, Decoboche Queen anywhere in the world. So all you need to do is share this live stream and tag a friend and you can get yourself 10 beautiful papers. Oh, um, I wanted to show you how to help the sliding um, of the box. All you're gonna need is a little bit of clear wax. This can be any clear wax, furniture wax, um, craft wax, wherever, any brand, any wax. Um, just get yourself a little bit of clear wax and apply it to where you need you know your lid to be sliding same goes for also if you're decoupaging a um like a box a jewelry box or something like that and you find that after varnishing or after painting your lid um your box's lid sticks together the um the edges stick together the easiest way to combat that is um, wax. 
so for like a box or something like that it doesn't have to be clear wax it can be any wax literally any wax um gold silver i don't know you can make it colorful or you can just make it clear but um wax is really going to help you to stop your lids from sticking so there we go i applied some wax on the edges and it's sliding around and it keeps it protected you know keeps it safe as well so the last few things that i wanted to add is just a few little specks of um white paint for you know a little bit of a snowflake effect so i'll close my wax and for my um white specks if you will what i really like to use my favorite product is um Finnabar, uh liquid acrylic in white oh there's my paint palette that is the question where did i put my paint palette uh, oh there it is it's just tipped okay so it's it's a very pigmented and a very um liquidy paint so um you can absolutely just use normal white paint and water it down for your specs uh, but this is already very pigmented and very watery. So you really like it makes makes life so much easier. And then you're going to take a stencil brush, preferably. Well, it can be any brush, but preferably something with like short, stiff, um, natural bristles. And you're going to dip it into your paint like so. And then you're going to either use your finger or I like to use these barbecue skewers and just like this you flick the paint all over right so i'm gonna put some over my ribbon everywhere and we can roll it over a little bit can you see hope that you can see I'll try and keep it this way. And it makes for a very, very simple and quick project that you can do whenever, you know, you feel like making something, but you don't really want to be sitting around for ages and you don't want to, you know, make it into a three day project. This kind of stuff is great. And of course, you know, if you have like a oh, Christmas present, I ha don't have a box or a nice, something nice, you know, and it's, um, we've been live streaming for one hour and 12 minutes and you can um, at least cut it down in half from, you know, me just talking. And then if you want to, you can take like, um, this is a snow pen from Pentart and it allows you to basically it's a bit like contour liner um but with snow paste and it allows you to kind of create this like snowy effect and you can start by applying um just like a line for example and then you can stipple it out a little bit or you know move it a little bit so that it looks a little bit more natural in a few spots doesn't have to be everywhere This stuff also comes in um, not just a pen, but also in um, like a tub, so you can use it as a paste, for example. 
and then if you need to cover like a larger area you can then use a brush or a palette knife and it really allows you to make really cool like snowy edges so I'm just kind of stippling it around here and there and if you then feel like making it even even more festive do you know what i'm gonna say to make it more festive <laughs> you guys probably already know if you've if you watched me before um you know with with snowflake paste or any kind of snow effect you probably already know where i'm going with this get your glitters out get your glitters out where is my transparent glitter or it doesn't have to be transparent it can be any color really um so i have Finnabar's transparent glitter here, but any other glitter is going to be fine um, while your snowflake paste is still not fully set. Sprinkle a little bit of glitter over it. So I've just done one flower and then applied some um, glitter over it. Now I'm going to do this other one. And... So I'll just go in like, you know, these kind of smaller sections. And I'm just going around the like the edges of the flower. Or um, the edges of, of the leaves of the flower. A little bit here and there. Like so, you can also like use your finger to spread it out if you need to a little bit more and then I don't like this uh, this little bit here. Just use a little bit of water to clean it up. Spread it around a bit. And you can carry on. Let's add just a couple more in a few places. Oh, did you hear that? I wonder if you guys can hear that. Those are the fireworks. It's going to be a loud night. And then again, sprinkle a little bit of glitter, and then obviously, once it's dry, you have to wait for the for the snowflake paste to dry a little bit. Um, and then you can tap the excess off. Then again, if you wanted to, you can go around the edges. <laughs> well, um, so um, this is a snow pen. This is a snow pen. It has like a snow um, snow effect uh, product inside of it. And you can carry on. I will probably have to go back in after the live stream and just tidy this up a little bit because the red contrast with the white is a little bit too much for me. But you get the idea. 
you can then, you know, also add more around the edges. Oh, should we? Let's just add. Mm, I don't know. Should we add like a snow border around the edge? Okay. No, right. I'll leave it for now and then we'll see. Okay. Um, yeah, so right now it's all very, you know, glittery. You can't really see because I need to like, I need to wait for the face to dry <laughs> and then um, tap off the excess. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So I might go back in and just add a few more touches of the snowflake paste. But um, that is it. Um, we are ready for the winner. Yes. Okay. So let me switch over to Rivello. Hello. So um, here is the finished box. It's very, very shiny. I don't know if you can see it properly, but obviously not all of that glitter is going to stay and then we have the edges and the little bow very very pretty and yes we are ready for the winner take it away terry <laughs> we um obviously normally terry would um put the winner on the screen um but um obviously she is doing it off off camera you know <laughs> she's not here actually she, she's just she was just putting putting the names on the wheel she says it's very 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 um full well thank you thank you jackie hi julie oh the winner is Anne child so um Anne, can you please uh email to at decoupage queen dot com to claim the prize and There we go. Okay, so congratulations, Anne. I hope that you will enjoy your prize. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this little live stream, this little, little impromptu live stream. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you everybody for sharing the live stream, for tagging your friends, for um, keeping me company today. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it um and yeah i will see you all uh, next time don't forget to um go ahead and like decoupage queen uh, facebook page to um to be notified for you know our future live streams which happen every saturday at 3 p.m eastern standard time and eight o'clock um gmt uk time or 9 p.m uh central european time so um thank you everybody for being here and i will see you all soon